Okay. Uh, so, so how could Tesla be worth? How could Tesla be worth twenty billion dollars if it's doing forty billion in revenue, Gordon? If it does forty billion in revenue, how is it worth twenty billion dollars? It's got to be worth some multiple of revenue, Gordon. Your numbers are absurd. I, I don't and know I get what you're you talking about. TV Previously, Tesla weathered a global pandemic, forced factory shutdowns, and against all odds, posted their third consecutive profitable quarter, while Tesla stock soared to astronomical heights. In the second half of 2020, Tesla looks to keep the momentum going, and in July, Tesla achieved yet another eye-opening milestone. Tesla is now the world's most valuable car maker after its market capitalization passed Toyota's for the first time. Shares of Tesla gained 5%, giving the company a valuation of over roughly $207 billion, compared with Toyota's valuation of about $202 billion. One thing that Elon Musk was often criticized for was being late on timelines. And now, the opposite was true. The Shanghai Gigafactory was built and operational in under a year, and then... We also reached in the past year volume production of the Model Y, and this was the smoothest launch that we've ever had. So I think we're, we're definitely getting better at new vehicle launches and building factories and scaling production. As Q2 earnings neared, there was a lot at stake for Tesla. Tesla. The electric vehicle maker stock speeding this year. Tesla now the reigning MVP of the auto industry when it comes to market cap. It's closing in on a massive $300 billion valuation. And if CEO Elon Musk's clean powerhouse turns a profit this quarter, it could be the ticket to doing the electric slide into the S&P 500. The first numbers that came in were quarterly deliveries. Phil LeBeau, he's got some new numbers uh, to bring us on Tesla right now. Phil. Hi, Andrew. Q2 numbers in terms of deliveries from Tesla, much better than expected. Total deliveries, 90,650 vehicles. The estimate was for 72,000 vehicles to be delivered last quarter. Here's how it breaks down. The Model 3 and Y, they don't separate them. They put them together. 80,050 were delivered. Most were expecting just 61,000 to be delivered. And then when you have the S and the X combined, they delivered 10,600 in the second quarter. And then it was time to find out if Tesla would meet the final obligation for S&P 500 inclusion. Analyst consensus was that Tesla would come close to breaking even. So what would they report? Sarah, this is a beat on the top and the bottom line and a beat on the bottom line by a wide margin. Earnings per share, it is a profit, a profit of $2.18. Revenue coming in better than expected at just over $6 billion. A couple of important notes here. The Gigafactory site that we were expecting them to potentially say something about, well, they're teasing us. They have said that they have picked one of two sites. The two sites Tesla considered were Tulsa, Oklahoma and Austin, Texas. So who would they choose? We're also very excited to announce that we're going to be building our next Gigafactory uh, in, in Texas near Austin. It'll be about 2,000 acres. Uh, and it's also where we'll be doing Cybertruck there, the Tesla Semi. And we'll be doing Model 3 and Y for the uh, eastern half of North America. You know, STEM sites will continue to grow in California, uh, but we will be creating a, a massive uh, factory and uh, cyber truck and semi programs in Texas. With all the positive developments, it was no surprise that Tesla stock kept powering up. And on August 11th, Tesla had some more news. I wanted to get to the news on Tesla that I mentioned at the top of the show, announcing a five for one stock split. We are seeing the stock rise in the after hours session. We're right. up in the 8% range in the after hours session in terms of a gain. Karen, we, we saw the same sort of phenomenon with Apple when it announced its stock split. We, we saw the rise and the rise and the rise. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not really sure what the notion that the retail investor, I guess, can, can access the stock a little bit more easily. I guess. I mean, sure. Yeah, may, maybe it will. I agree with Karen. It's absurd. Like, I mean, there's nothing that's I, I'm, changed. I'm on board, but, too. I'm you know, on board with you guys. So, I mean, I don't really get this 6% <laughs> six, six rise now, but, you know, so be it. Here we are. Come on, Mel. <laughs> so be it. In the following three weeks since the announcement of the stock split, Tesla stock kept going higher and higher. Tesla shares are up again today. In fact, they are approaching $1,900 a share. I love the headline over uh, with our colleagues at TechCrunch. 
Tesla shares rally for no reason because indeed there's no real catalyst today. Tesla shares hitting a new high in the session today. That stock is up about 4% today, but up more than 20% this week and up about 50% since the stock split was announced. Uh, let's take a look at shares of Tesla. When you probably last checked on them, if you checked on them on Friday, you said, wow, they're trading at 21.33, 21.37, whatever it is. Oh, no, the split adjustment has gone through. And starting today, they will trade on a split adjusted level. There you see the price pre-market up a little under 3%, $455 a share. With Tesla stock at all-time record levels, Tesla wisely took advantage of the situation. Tesla is looking to cash in on its soaring popularity with investors. The electric car company unveiled plans Tuesday to raise $5 billion in its biggest new stock sale since it became a publicly traded company a decade ago. Investors have a seemingly insatiable appetite for Tesla. The share price has surged nearly six-fold since the start of the year, and not even a five-for-one stock split has dented demand. The capital raise gave Tesla $14.5 billion of cash on hand. With this new war chest, Tesla was now free to accelerate their mission to help transition the world to clean and sustainable energy. As September rolled around, anticipation starts to build as to what Tesla will unveil at Battery Day. We are just about one hour away now from Tesla's highly anticipated Battery Day presentation. And as the broader markets move higher, Shares of Tesla are actually losing power right now, down about 5.6% as investors were all geeked up and expecting that Tesla would hit mass production of its new batteries next year. Instead, CEO Elon Musk tweeted last night, important note about Tesla Battery Day unveil tomorrow. This affects long-term production, especially semi, well, semi, semi-truck, cyber-truck, and roadster. But what we announce will not reach serious high volume production until 2022. Let's preview Battery Day with our longtime Tesla buyer, Gerber Kawasaki CEO Ross Gerber, and noted Wall Street Bear GLJ research founder and CEO Gordon Johnson. <laughs> Quite amazing what's going on here. This is a huge event. Um, it is like unveiling the light bulb with Edison right now. So we're super excited that the vibe here is, is so much energy. So this is a very exciting day for history and solving climate change, and I'm very excited to see the plans laid out. Wow, Gordon, what are you expecting from Battery Day? Uh, we're not expecting much. Listen, in 2012, Elon Musk did effectively his first Battery Day, where he did the battery swap, where it was a big stage, a big crowd, everybody clapped. He got $300 million from California taxpayers for that battery swap that he showed on stage. That never happened. Listen, Tesla's revenues peaked in the fourth quarter of 18. Their margins peaked in the third quarter of 18. And they haven't grown since, despite the fact they have a new facility. We think it's a busted growth story. And okay. we, speak, we think speaking in these general terms I mean, this, is this very is What do you mean they haven't grown since? First of all, they've grown to a $40 billion revenue company. And it's a $400 billion market cap. And everything you just said is that he was off by a little bit of time. You're inventing a completely yes, well, new wait technology, minute, Wait a minute, Gordon. Ross. Can I, when, you know, I looked at Gordon's research. I checked a lot of it. And, and yes, you could argue that there were a lot of fancy promises, flowery comments that were made. And we haven't quite seen that yet. He pushes his ideas first without really necessarily having the timeline 100% right. We know this. That's irrelevant. If you're going to change the world, you have to think big and huge. And that's what Elon's done. He's changing the world. So we can focus about all, all the promises that maybe were missed by a year or two, but we can focus on the actual results of Tesla. Gordon, the one thing that I question about what your thesis surrounds is that uh, $19 a share by next year. We're at more than $470. Listen, Tesla has 46 competitors coming next year. And after that, in 2022, hundreds of EVs are coming. ICE cars are profitable. Tesla loses money making EVs. So these companies can literally give their cars away. Okay. VW, Porsche. Uh, so, so how could Tesla be worth, how could Tesla be worth $20 billion if it's doing $40 billion in revenue, Gordon? If it does $40 billion in revenue, how is it worth $20 billion? It's got to be worth some multiple of revenue. Or your numbers are absurd. I, I, I don't I know get what you're you talking get about. TV spot. Okay, I, let, I, let me I, just... I get it. I get it, but it's absurd. Okay. Finally, it was time to see what Tesla would unveil. Accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. We must produce more uh, EVs that need to be affordable. 
um, and a lot more energy storage uh, while building fa factories faster and with far, far less investment. Um, <clears throat> so uh, goal number one is a terawatt hour scale battery production. So tera is the new giga. Uh, and a terawatt is a, a thousand times more than a gigawatt. And then on the grid side, uh, we, we have a similar mountain to climb. 1,600 times growth from today's grid batteries to go 100% renewable on the grid and to take all of the existing heating fossil fuel uses in homes and businesses 100% electric. We would need 135 fully built out Nevada gigafactories to achieve 20 terawatt hours a year. It's not scalable enough of a solution. We need a dramatic rethink of the cell manufacturing system to, to scale as fast as we can and should. To make the best cars in the world, we design vehicles and factories from the ground up. And now we do this for batteries as well. So let's get started. We have a plan to have the cost per kilowatt hour. And it's not a plan that rests on a single innovation, some research project that'll never see the light of day. It's a plan that has taken creative engineering and industrialization across every facet of what makes a cell into a battery pack from raw material to the finished thing. And this is what, this is what we mean when we, when we talk about tabless. And so when we put it all together and go to our new 80 millimeter length, 4680 we call this uh, new cell design, we get five times the energy with six times the power and enable 16% range increase, just form factor alone. The key to a high performing assembly line is accomplishing processes while in motion, continuous motion, uh, and thinking of the line as a highway, max velocity down the highway, no start yeah. and stop, no city driving. Exactly, no st stop lights and traffic lights or anything. You want the highway. I want the highway. Yeah. And together with our internal design team that makes this equipment and designs this equipment, we coupled thinking about how to make the best cell with thinking about how to make the best equipment so that we could accomplish the fastest parts per minute rates on all of these tools. Um, and through all of that development, we were able to get to the point where we can uh, implement assembly lines, one line, 20 gigawatt hours, seven times increase in output per line. And when you're thinking about scalability mm -hmm. and pure effort, having one line be seven X the capability is just effort multiplying. Yeah. All right, so stacking it up, we're not just talking about uh, cost or range, we've got to look at all the facets. So range increase, we're unlocking up to 54% increase in range for our vehicles and energy density for our energy products. 56% uh, reduction in dollars per kilowatt hour at the battery pack level and a 69% reduction in investment per gigawatt hour, which is the true enabler when we talk back about how do we achieve this scale problem here. I think it's pretty nice that investment per kilowatt per gigawatt hour reduction is 69%. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, 0.420%, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what this uh, enables uh, us to do is achieve a new trajectory in the reduction of, of uh, cell cost. So long term, we want to try to make about 20 million vehicles a year. And um, I think probably, uh, w w yeah, like I said, about, about three years from now, uh, we're confident we can make a very, com uh, uh, very compelling $25,000 electric vehicle uh, that's also fully autonomous. Following battery day, the media flat out embarrassed themselves. Tesla's down in the pre-market after its much anticipated battery day. At that event, Elon Musk said his big goal was to drive down battery costs, but he adds that the technology to make that happen will take some time. We, we were talking about the million mile battery. What a setup. Gordon Johnson was still not convinced that Tesla could produce batteries. But also from the perspective of investors not understanding this story. Tesla does not make its own batteries um, and we believe they're selling vaporware. Yahoo Finance wasn't much better. Tesla had a battery day. This is not their first battery day. They had one in 2015 and I think back then... They have never had a battery day other than they've this. Had, they've had other battery announcements. And I think they said in 2015 that by 2017, they were going to have a 620 mile battery. And they, they never did. Don't have that yet. They never well, did. Well, do dates, I mean, do dates matter or do they not yeah. matter? Is it just they that do. Tesla uh, said that they were going to be building 500,000 cars a year in 2014 when they built the Gigafactory. And guess how many cars they're going to build this year? 500,000. 
That is so much more on track than every other auto company. The fact that you guys can't do your homework and figure that out is embarrassing. The frustration of how poorly the media understood the sheer basics of what Tesla was doing was shared by many within the Tesla community. How could it be that the media talking heads and even the highly reputable financial analysts could be so colossally wrong about Tesla, while the retail shareholders seem to have no such problems? It was obvious, even to Elon Musk, as to which group had deeper and more accurate insights as to what Tesla was doing. I do think that a lot of the retail investors actually have uh, deeper and more accurate insights than um, many of the, the, the big institutional investors and, uh, and, and certainly better insights than many of the analysts. Not a surprise that Elon Musk said that. Look, he has sparred from time to time with analysts on Wall Street. He believes that there are some who just don't get it, don't understand Tesla to the degree that they should and underappreciate the company. So he gave a, a tip of the hat, guys, to Tesla's retail investors. In the next episode, we wrap up the year of 2020 with Tesla hitting more major milestones and we get news of one of the biggest missed opportunities in corporate history. Hope you enjoyed the episode and please consider supporting on Patreon to help me continue making more episodes like this. And keep in mind, all content is for educational and entertainment purposes and not financial advice. So until next time, I'll see you guys soon.